Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. User, it hurts when I do this. Support, well, don't do that. Magically changing network addresses. My computer won't open since you guys worked on it. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. User, it hurts when I do this. Support, well, don't do that. My first post here, though I've been a lurker for a while and enjoyed many of your stories. In a previous job I was responsible for, among other things, a large distributed application, pseudo microservice on the back end, with a heavy user client that had a legacy predating Win32 on a site with a few hundred users. After an update to the system, users began reporting crashes. At first this seemed to be random, but eventually it appeared to be user-specific and would follow them from machine to machine. A few special users in particular made a lot of noise about it, raising hell to their boss. After due investigation it became apparent that initiating too many rapid-fire keypresses would cause a stack underflow in a particular module of the heavy client. When I say too many rapid presses, I mean that on a mechanical keyboard the input would sound like machine gun fire. This was obviously a bug in the software, in that it was not checking the state of the stack before trying to pop something off it. Since it was reproducible and the logs traced the appropriate section of code to the line, the developers were able to fix it pretty rapidly, however, on a large legacy production system, created when nobody had ever even heard of CI or DevOps, in a 24-7 production environment, patching isn't something that can just be done arbitrarily, it has to be explicitly planned. Clearly it's not ideal, but this constraint is both a consequence of the nature of the business environment and a lack of political will to enforce regular preventative maintenance. Run it into the ground and wonder why it crashes. Hashtag YOLO Once the root cause was identified, the users were advised, both in person and on an email blast, not to mash their keyboards until a fix was delivered, validated, and deployed, regardless, the boss of the problem users called my boss and I to the carpet about the issues that were plaguing their team and absolutely preventing any productive work from happening. The sky was falling. The three of us sat at a small table in angry boss's office and listened to approximately 10 minutes of ranting. At an appropriate interlude, I interjected that it was in fact a serious issue, and I could demonstrate it to see how big a deal it was. I walked over to the angry boss's desk, opened the client on their machine, spun the monitor around so it was visible from the table, and proceeded to demonstrate normal behavior with a reasonable rate of input. I then ratcheted up the input rate bit by bit, with the software still performing normally. It wasn't until I hit the rate and approximate force of the GAU-8 Avenger, BRRT gun and the A-10 Warthog on the keyboard that the software crashed. Any harder and I would have broken the thing in half. The formerly angry boss, now horrified about the thrashing I had just given their keyboard, was silent. My own boss simply smirked, which translated to immense restrained joy and schadenfreude. I then pointed out that I already had a fix from the developers, but the blocker for deployment was their own production schedule and a lack of cooperation from their team in scheduling the maintenance. The now apologetic boss quickly carved out a maintenance window for us, and later that day called his subordinate leadership into a meeting and admonished them for over-dramatizing the issue. Whether through lack of reporting or users no longer mashing keys, the issue effectively evaporated between that day and the maintenance window that actually fixed the bug several days later. We also had our IT director replace the angry boss's keyboard for good measure. Magically changing network addresses. Another story from days working support in university. Several years ago my department outgrew the office space in our building. We made a deal with another department in the building next door to get some additional offices, in return we provided computer support. This wasn't too hard since their computer needs were not as difficult as ours, plus the network was 100% maintained by our campus network team. Late one afternoon I got a call from a graduate student in the other building. The desktop system he had appeared to be working, but he had no network access. I thought maybe the network card was bad, 
This was an older system that used a PCI Ethernet card, so I grabbed a spare and headed over. Since this machine was on a different campus network than our department it used a local username and password, like a laptop, so we could log in even without any network connection at all. I logged in and started troubleshooting, checked the network config and restarted networking, Linux box using DHCP, and it got an address, so I was stumped for a moment. I kept poking around and restarted networking, forced getting a new DHCP lease, stuff like that, and then the shoe dropped. I was getting an unroutable address, 192.168.x.x when I knew that the campus DHCP server gave out addresses in real university IP space. I checked another computer in the same office, and it had a university IP. Since unroutable IPs were blocked at the building gateway, no surprise this machine had no internet access. At this point I guessed someone in a nearby office had probably plugged in a wireless router so they could have their own private Wi-Fi, and it was configured to serve DHCP on the wired side. I looked around the office, but there wasn't anything there. I restarted the DHCP client on the computer a few times and finally got an address on the proper network. I told the student that he should be okay for the rest of the day, and called the main network guys and explained what I found. They asked me to try and find the rogue DHCP server, but I explained I had no keys to any of the offices, and at almost 5 o'clock, so sorry, I was out of there. I knew they had master keys to every building and office, unlike me, so it was up to them. I found out the next day someone had come over and searched around until they the router and yanked it. I'm guessing they left a nasty note for the owner. My computer won't open since you guys worked on it. So, let me bring you back in time to when I first started working in IT. Which was roughly a year ago. Before I had worked this job, I had zero IT experience, just my experience of solving problems by googling them and building computers, coding a little, stuff like that. So I had been hired for this job which was a consumer tech store, with a help desk that the general public could come to and pay us to fix their machines. It was my very first day. I had been showed around the shop, had people show me the ticketing system and watched a few interactions with some customers from the more experienced techs there. They decided, hey, he seems ready to man the front counter and take the next few people that come in. So, they let me just hang out and wait. Cue the user. An older woman walks in with her laptop, plops it on the counter. Me, hi, how can I help you? User, well, I had you guys replace the screen on my computer, and now it doesn't open up. She had a laptop, and was clearly irate at the fact that we could be so incompetent as to give her a laptop back that didn't even open. I watched her attempt to open it. The problem was clear. She was attempting to open the laptop from the hinge side. Me, alright, well let me go ahead and give it a try. I place my hands onto the laptop lid and simply slide my fingers under the display and open the laptop, making sure that I don't open it from the hinge side. A 50 50th chance, but by God I did it. The laptop is open. I look at her. She looks at me. I don't really remember what I said, but it was most likely something like, well, looks like it's working now. She called me a smart ass and left. This was my very first issue I troubleshoot in IT. This issue is what made me sure that I could do this job, and I would be good at it. I was filled with confidence, and it was a great first day. To this day, it boggles my mind that this occurred. This woman picked up her laptop from us. We make a point of showing the user that the computer works and their problem is solved when they pick it up and pay. In the case of a laptop screen replacement, we probably turned it on and showed her it worked. It just shocks me that this person, who most likely saw it be opened and working, took it home, attempted to open it, and always tried from the same side. It shocks me that this person, instead of doing literally any level of problem solving, picked up their laptop, got into their car, and drove to our store, had me open it, and drove back to their home. I would assume they invested at least 30 minutes round trip. To this day, I'm still not quite sure what to say to people when the problem is them, and it is very clearly them. I usually just say, haha we all make mistakes I guess, 
but even this feels insufficient.